Okay, so Mick West, you've been a UFO skeptic that's been following the UFO stuff the last few years. You have single-handedly, through math and logic, debunked several uh, UFO photos and videos, and you're also the author of Escaping the Rabbit Hole. History today, Mick, will go down in the history books as something truly incredible. UFO hearings in Congress. Uh, give me your initial thoughts. Well, I was a bit disappointed, I must say. Uh, it was being billed in various uh, arenas as being like the great revelation that's going to end all the speculation about, about UFOs. And really what we heard was very little that was new. Uh, there were three witnesses, Dave Grush, uh, Dave Fravor, and Ryan Graves. And all of them have spoken before, uh, Graves and Fravor, at length for several years. And they, they said very little that was new. Uh, it was a bit disappointing. And, you know, for viewers who may not know, uh, David Fravor's story was we first heard of his story in December 2017. Uh, and his story has gotten a lot of coverage, documentaries, movies made about his story over the last six years. And again, Congress pulls him in and he tells the same story. Uh, Ryan Graves, we've heard his story since... I believe 2019 and we again documentaries made about his story tons of media coverage on his story he's brought in where he tells the same story dave grush who was you know did a huge interview on news nation and spilled the beans about aliens uh comes in and and again offered nothing new the big headline is nothing new well, let's talk about evidence, because uh, that's been the main thing that's been lacking the last six years is a lot of stories, a lot of photos with stories behind them, a lot of videos with stories behind them. But it's really been lacking on evidence of non-human intelligence, of aliens, of extraterrestrials. Yeah. So it all led up to today, today's hearing. There were a lot of expectations for evidence. Did you see? Were you convinced? Was any evidence presented? There was almost no new evidence. Uh, uh, Professor Arvi Loeb was running the Galileo project, which is a scientific project to look for uh, UFOs, basically, in aerospace, said a couple of days ago, uh, we need real evidence, not what people said. And really, all we've got from these hearings is what people said. Uh, Dave David Grush is basically is going by mostly what people told him. Uh, and then we have these these eyewitness accounts of uh, of Fravor and Graves, and then they tell us that there are there's more information. We need to get to that real evidence. You could tell um, uh, that some of these congressional leaders were attending their UFOs 101 class, uh, and I think a lot of people are disappointed. They thought Congress was on this the last few years that they'd been digging getting, you know, classified data and evidence and information and all this stuff and that we'd be further along than just the mm -hmm. very, very, very basics at this point. But let's talk about the witnesses. So the big thing today was, you know, Congress uh, handpicked uh, three witnesses to come and testify and share what they knew about a UAP and what they felt uh, should be done. And so let's start with Ryan Graves. Ryan Graves is a, you know, former F-18 pilot who whose squadron observed unidentified objects, or at least on their sensors observed off the East Coast in a training area, which I believe is a big clue, in a military training area, uh, would constantly observe per graves these objects that seem to be doing weird things like hovering in place despite wind with no visible propulsion. What are your insights and opinions on Ryan Graves as a witness and Ryan Graves' testimony of UAP off the East Coast? Well, you know, Ryan Graves never actually saw a UAP. Uh, and this is something I think that gets conflated and people don't really understand what they're talking about. And when he talks about saying, we saw these things every day for two years, what he's talking about is, is blips on the radar. What happened was that they... Uh, they upgraded their radar system. They previously had a kind of an old fashioned radar that had this little dish that points around in the nose of the plane. And they upgraded to this kind of flat panel one, which is much more sensitive and easier to direct in different, different directions. And after they replaced this radar uh, with the newer radar, they started seeing these blips on the radar. And they originally thought that there was something wrong with the radar. Now, it may just be 
and this is the perhaps the leading hypothesis for what's actually going on there, is that the majority of those things were balloons. Uh, we know that the military does have a big issue with uh, mylar balloons. And uh, in the, the most recent uh, uh, report uh, by Arrow, they said that nearly half of the ones that they identified were actually balloons. So definitely balloons are a problem. So the, the question is, like, is there actually strong evidence of something amazing going on? It can't be overstated that Graves is on the record saying he personally never saw one of these objects. And I believe what he means, even though it's completely murky still, and I don't know why it's never cleared up or asked about, is he never physically saw with his own eyes any of these objects ever. It was always a squad squadron member saw them, or I know someone who saw them or et cetera is where mo the majority of this testimony comes from. And that's been his story for years. And so I, why weren't any of those people? Yeah, well, exactly. The people who actually saw them, why weren't the people who actually saw these things called before Congress? Yeah, and I think if we can't get the real evidence in terms of recordings and data and radar and things like that, the next best, best thing would be the first-hand witnesses. Another thing with that I didn't really hear brought up today in today's hearing, few mentions of the Chinese spy balloon, but nobody really mentions a lot of the news that has come out based on Navy documentation and uh, vast reporting that a lot of these objects that were described off the East Coast that Graves described, uh, the only object that was eyes on that people saw with their eyes was a, a round object with a cube inside of it. Ten miles off the coast of Virginia Beach, two F-18 Super Hornets were split by a UAP. The object, described as a dark gray or a black cube inside of a clear sphere, came within 50 feet of the lead aircraft. If you look in human-made history, if you look at what humans have made in the military, humans have made clear, transparent orbs with cubes inside of them. These are uh, radar reflectors, radar jammers or whatever. And there is a cube within a sphere. So humans have made something that looks like that. It goes into the air. It has a process. And then you learn that after the Chinese spy balloon, there was further reporting that there were smaller balloons had been for a while, smaller Chinese Spy, uh, balloons off the East Coast in this exact area that were radar jamming balloons. So you've got historical precedent. You've got, you know, objects that were made by humans that look like what was described. And then you learn things that China had smaller spy balloons off the East Coast in this exact area. And then now we learn that China had a has had a spy base in Cuba for decades if you believe the reports for decades down there what have they been flying out of there none of that was brought up today mm -hmm. none of that was even considered today at all uh, it would have been great if they kind of like uh, kind of discussed the range of possibilities that well, we might be looking at but it's possible that you know some of that they weren't even familiar with it because it's like kind of the unsexy aspect of what we're talking about it's not aliens it's just chinese spy balloons which is obviously a big issue in itself uh but you know the people who are promoting this hearing you know perhaps want to promote the alien aspect rather than the uh, the chinese aspect and it, it may be also something that they've been asked not to talk about because it's something that would reveal our, our capabilities uh, in, in detecting these particular things and that might in fact be something that explains why no real action was taken uh, uh, on the, the cases that Grave was discussing, if it was something that was thought to be an enemy thing, like the, the, you wouldn't actually see the action that is being taken, there would be action, but it would be top secret, and Graves himself wouldn't actually know about it. The pilots wouldn't know about what was being done in terms of countermeasures. I think that probably most of what they were seeing on the East Coast was just normal airborne clutter, but it's certainly possible that some of that might be uh, you know, Chinese balloons or drones trying to test out our airspace. Let's move on to David Grush. David Grush made headlines two months ago going on News Nation, which has become America's UFO channel, with a jaw-dropping story and allegations that the U.S. government has recovered, has a top-secret, uber-secret team that recovers crashed non-human UFOs that non-human intelligence bodies were inside these ufos that people have been killed 
uh, to keep it a secret uh, that the aliens themselves have been killing humans, a whole bunch of stuff. And so he was, you know, dead center in the in today's hearing. What did you think of his uh, testimony and what he had to say? Yeah, I mean, this whole hearing, I think, was triggered by by his uh, his initial claims. Uh, and really, people did want to hear what he had to say. I wanted to hear what he had to say. But he didn't say anything new <laughs> that I can really think of that was actually significant. Uh, he basically repeated some of the same claims, uh, perhaps in, in less detail than he had before. But in nearly every interesting question, like he would People, he was asked things like, uh, have we made contact with with aliens? And he say he would say that he, he can't talk about this. He can talk about it in a secure setting. I can't discuss that in an open session. Over and over again, that was that was his answer. I do know a lot of that information, but that's something I can't discuss publicly. I can't discuss that publicly. But once again, I can't discuss that publicly. Uh, so it was very disappointing. I mean, really, the it was originally billed, I think, as being this great hearing where we would have all these witnesses coming forward. The people that David Grush had talked to who had told him these things were going to be subpoenaed and brought in, and they would tell us all about the, you know, where the bodies were and which hangar uh, these, these flying saucers are in, and where's this giant one that's in uh, another country somewhere. But we didn't. We just got David Grush himself and these two other pilots that we've been hearing from for years. And then David Grush just repeats essentially everything that um, he'd said before and says that anything else I'm going to have to tell you in a secure setting. Sure. So it, it kind of kicked the can down the road. And you know, as hopefully... Is tradition, as is tradition here. <laughs> indeed, indeed. We... <laughs> he states this in his opening statement and reiterates this because he's asked about it, is he didn't physically firsthand see any of this stuff. Uh, he says in his statement that a lot of this information mm. was given to him through second, third parties. And uh, he considers those people to be legitimate. And so he considers what they have to say to be real. Um, and no names were named. He wasn't really asked to name any names uh, for the most part. Uh, so we it's still this big question mark. And as you said, it's disappointing because we thought these answers were coming today. They didn't come today. Get the people who saw the alien bodies in the seats with their yeah. hand raised saying, I swear, you know, get those people. This was it just seemed um, like a, a missed opportunity. Another thing that struck me was there were basically no critical questions asked from congressional yeah. leaders there were no digging insightful real questions um did, did you get that impression as well yeah but i think that's because they don't really understand the situation you know we saw from the the people like running the the show birchett and luna they didn't really you know have a, a good grasp on on the details and the other people there a lot of them seem to be learning about it for the first time uh, and whenever you get to a question that was actually kind of getting to the meat of the matter, uh, Grush would just say that he couldn't answer that question. So even when we did have some uh, some somewhat skeptical questions, I think from Eric Burleson, he had a, had a few, uh, he wasn't able to get any answers. Everyone's heard the Tic Tac story, or at least they think they've heard the Tic Tac story and they know the basics. But but the key thing is this, and no one asks about this, no one knows about this, and it seems like the media and Congress just don't care, <laughs> um, is that he says, and he reiterated today, Mick, that his encounter with the Tic Tac was five minutes, a five-minute five, five minute encounter. What we saw with four sets of eyes over a five-minute period, still, there's nothing, we have nothing close to it. It was, it was amazing to see. The pilot of the plane next to him was Alex Dietrich. Alex Dietrich was flying, was his wing person, essentially. She says it. the whole thing lasted 10 seconds. Her testimony is that it lasted 10 seconds, and she scoffs at the idea of it being five minutes, and that that's just silly. And so you've got two witnesses basically right there in the same area, and yeah. they can't, one says it lasted five minutes, one says it lasted 10 seconds. That's a huge discrepancy where the two main witnesses can't even agree on the basics oh, yeah. about this Tic Tac encounter, but it's never brought up. It's never asked about. 
no, it's it's kind of hand waved away again. You said, oh, maybe it's just like a misunderstanding or time dilation or something like that. But it, but you can't really hand wave away of ten seconds versus five minutes. A lot of folks today, Burchett, Fravor, uh, Graves uh, mentioned it. A few others mentioned it that the genesis of either their personal interest or the general interest in the public and Congress goes back to the 2017 New York Times front page article on the Pentagon's UFO program, ATIP. Multiple times this was brought up today. A groundbreaking uh, 2017 New York Times report. 2017 uh, New York Times. Uh, like many others uh, in 2017, I saw the New York Times article. Um, from New York Times article, and I would encourage everybody to read that. And that was just shocking to me because yeah. uh, through my reporting, we've we've demonstrated that that article was factually inaccurate, you know, deceptive. That story is mostly false and and wrong. And to hear congressional leaders, witnesses, everyone still saying it all goes back to this article uh, shows that shows me that people still haven't caught up to what's going on, really going on in the story. People just don't know the facts, the basic facts about what's going on. Uh, were you shocked to hear? Do you continue I... to be shocked to hear about the 2017 New York Times article? No, I, unfortunately not, because it's something that just comes up all the time as being, you know, essentially like a red pill moment for people. Uh, it was for Grush himself. Like he he got interested in UFOs starting with that particular thing. And so many people have told me that, you know, that was you know, their introduction uh, to to what was going on. You know, they, they, they read the New York Times story. And so they get they get sucked in because of that. And this New York Times story is just given it the kind of authority of you know the New York Times said this. The program was Skinwalker Ranch. It was OSAP. It was Robert Bigelow and people chasing dino beavers and werewolves. Mm -hmm. And Leslie Kane, a, a UFO activist, took the story, threw OSAP away, threw Skinwalker away, and made it just about UFOs, which is. Which got the, to her credit, got the attention of Congress. The 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 problem being most of the story was wrong. And that's not an opinion. It's wrong. The story is absolutely a wrong, false story. And we heard today congressional leaders and the witnesses saying that article continues to be their inspiration. It continues to push the issue further in Congress. And none of them are aware of the fact that the story is riddled with you know, unimpeachable errors. The public isn't aware of this. The media isn't aware of this. And I guarantee you, Congress isn't aware of this. But David Grush is, without a doubt, linked to Skinwalker Ranch ghost hunters. Yeah. Uh, Jay Stratton dates back to 2007, at least, uh, when it comes to interest in Skinwalker Ranch. Stratton, who was Grush's boss at the UAP task force, claims that he's haunted by ghosts and werewolves and uh, believes in this kind of weird multi-dimensional pseudo psychic kind of reality to this phenomena uh grush is linked to eric davis who in three just three years ago almost word for word claimed the exact same thing that grush is claiming to the new york times you could go read the new york times right now eric davis says off-world vehicles, not from this earth, the government's retrieving the crashes, all this stuff. Eric Davis is a longtime mm. Skinwalker Ranch ghost hunter, claims ghosts spoke to him telepathically. It's still, I don't think Congress even knows. Yeah. I don't think they know that a skin that Skinwalker ghost hunters were in charge of the Pentagon's UAP task force for years. <laughs> I don't think they realize this. I don't think they even know about this yet no i don't I, I agree and it's probably something the pentagon is a little bit uh embarrassed about so yeah <laughs> yeah i'm sure if you ask Kirk patrick about it he'll he'll roll his eyes because it's kind of the bane of his existence that this he's got this kind of legacy of uh, uh poor investigation that went before him right. uh but, but yeah it's it's very much a real thing and it continues to be with travis taylor and, uh, and stratton working on Skinwalker Ranch now, which is just so bizarre. And there's a photo 
of Grush at a UFO conference from last year. He's sitting at a table with George Knapp, with Jay Stratton, with Travis Taylor. Those three other guys that I mentioned, deeply involved with Skinwalker Ranch, deeply involved with dubious claims of just the craziest stuff ever, have never presented any evidence. But none of this context was brought up, looked into, thought of as relevant, perhaps. I mean, we heard Jay Stratton's name, but almost just kind of like a throwaway um, today. Why wasn't Jay Stratton there? He was in charge of the UAP task force. He was the guy asking David Grush to go do these things. He was the boss. Why? I mean, he's retired. He's appearing on History Channel shows. Just call him to Washington, D.C. Were you surprised to not see people like Jay Stratton, Lou Elizondo there? Not to Yeah, I mean, I, I Jay Stratton would have been one of my number one picks uh, to be there because he was the head of the UAP task force. He was, for a while, uh, Grush's boss. He had Title 50 and Title 10 clearance, which meant he could ask anybody anything and uh, you know, make them tell him things. He would have been able to get the exact same information and probably more information because he was more senior than Grush. And so he he's someone who probably knows uh, about these claims and about you know the you know, where the the hangers are that have these these craft in allegedly. Uh, but yeah, he wasn't called, and uh, it's it's a bit strange. I mean, why is that? I mean, you bring up Skinwalker Ranch. You know, he he appears on the Skinwalker Ranch TV show now. It's this very weird thing because you know, as you know, like going back to the the nineties, uh, Skinwalker Ranch is kind of the root of a lot of what we're seeing right now. Skinwalker Ranch was this haunted ranch that uh, inspired. The creation of the OSAP program by by Harry Reid back then. And, hey, you're you know, stealing then... my lines. Those are my lines, <laughs> Nick. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you're, you're the expert here. You've got this wonderful <laughs> series of videos explaining it to, to people, which you know I recommend everybody watch. But you know, part of the problem there is that people's eyes glaze over when you start talking about it. Yeah. And you it, mentioned it's... it, you mentioned it the other night to Chris Cuomo. Yeah. I saw it. You I were did. like, <laughs> you were like, hey, a lot <laughs> of this is linked to Skinwalker Ranch and OSAP. And Chris Cuomo was like, yeah, and it's not—it's not just because it's not—it's unfamiliar to them. It's that when you start looking into it, it's like, oh, that can't be real. You know, this is right. obviously nonsense. But it's right. not. It's true. It's not true in the sense that there's there's actual werewolves, but it's true that these people believed it, and it's true that the foundation of ORSAP is actually Skinwalker Ranch and ghosts and things like that. Right, uh, and that reverberates to this day. Right, and it's such. When you have the context, when you're informed, when if the public had the context of here's what the Skinwalker Ranch investigators like Stratton, like Davis, believe in non-human intelligence, multidimensional beings traveling in between dimensions, spacecraft that but not just that, but UFOs that are linked to ghosts and that they're coming out of portals and all of these things. And then when you listen to what Grush is claiming and that he's heard this from certain people. And that you know that these some of these certain people are skinwalker people, all of that begins to click. Oh, okay, I kind of see what's happening here. But the fact that that's not looked into, brought up, or asked about at all at this point is is pretty silly. And, and perhaps you have a point that it just sounds so ridiculous yeah. that it's outright outright you know denied. I, yeah, I think it, it's difficult for people to bring up to their colleagues uh, in Congress because you know you start talking to somebody about Skinwalker Ranch and how these people believed in ghosts, uh, they're going to look at you kind of weird. So it's it's this it's it's almost like the the topic has immunized itself against scrutiny by being too ridiculous to be scrutinized. <laughs> Dude, I couldn't have said it better. That's actually really good. I'm going to write that down and, and I'm going to say that I said it. <laughs> <laughs>